Okay, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jen Cushman. I am an empathic intuitive and a Reiki master. I am also a master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming, mental emotional release, and hypnotherapy. I'm also a mixed media artist. I'm starting to add that back in and say that again because it is art plus spirit as the merge, okay? So what I want to talk to you today is time bending. And it sounds like some kind of magical thing. And trust me, it actually is pretty darn magical. Oops, hang on a second. I forgot to turn off my phone. Let me put that on Do Not Disturb. Please forgive me. Okay. So it is actually very magical. And it is also energetically magical. And it is very, very real. It is something that we all can do with a little bit of practice. It's just like our intuition, right? Everybody has creativity. Everybody has intuition. It is a birthright. We all have it. And like any skill that we get good in with life, we have to practice it. So time bending goes in with your intuitive skills and you can just start adding it to your uh, repertoire, your toolbox, right? So that's what I want to talk about. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story first because it always helps to tell a little bit of metaphor of a story. And I'm going to talk about myself for a minute and then I'm going to go in and explain a little bit about the tools for you so you can get it. Okay. So if we're good at that, give me a thumbs up and just let me know that you're good with the story first. Okay. And if not, then give me a thumbs down and I'll move on. <laughs> but you know, I like to tell stories. Okay. Now, as many of you guys know, from my social media, I had a big day on Thursday. I had the opportunity through being a Made TV maker. I'm one of the original OG members of Made TV, which is a streaming network streaming service for makers and creatives. And it's a membership site and it's made TV dot made TV network dot com. Hitomi will put in a link later. And um, it opened in August of this last year. Right. So I have been participating in this format and it's been really amazing for community. I've met a whole bunch of other makers and we are really building something together and it's really fun. So we had an opportunity with Schiffer Book Publishing um, on Thursday for 10 of us who were makers from May TV to be able to make a book pitch. And um, I did, I've written a couple of books, craft books, and I really have too much on my plate this year to write a book. But one of the things that I saw when I went into the Schiffer Crafts publishing website, I saw that they have an imprint called Red Feather and it's a mind, body, spirit, and they have a lot of Oracle card decks in there. Now, as you guys know, I published, I self-published Joyful. I did a hundred of them for self-publishing last year and I've sold out, so they're gone, which is awesome. And um, I'm at the point where I either need to go ahead and you know get another hundred decks and go ahead and just get more and keep selling them on my own or get distribution. And at this particular moment in my life with soul stirring retreats this summer with Huna in March. So I have six weeks of travel this year, as you guys. So with my six weeks of travel and with what I want to do, I'm at the point where I would like to find distribution. It would be so much nicer to be able to have a publisher because the publisher will package them, will get the orders, will do the stuff. And then I just get a royalty check. And who doesn't like as a creative to get a check in the mail, right? So one of the things with the book pitch is that we had three minutes, three minutes to make our book pitch. Now, three minutes can be an incredibly long time to be on the spotlight to talk, or it can be incredibly short. For me, I knew three minutes was going to be incredibly short because unlike the other makers, I already had a product in my hand right? And I wanted to actually demonstrate how my product worked. So I was very fortunate because everybody else had the idea of a book and they had to explain what their book was about using words. We had one slide for imagery, but really they didn't have the imagery. And so they just had to use it and get the feel out. Well, I already had my deck. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show a demo just like I do every single week on Magic Mondays. I wanted to shuffle the cards, pull the card, and then read from my Oracle card deck from the guidebook. 
that's what I did. Okay. Now here's where time bending gets involved. Okay. So that three minutes for me was going to be a very, very short amount of time for me to get all of the information is who I was, what my, what my deck was, who it was for, what it was about and who was my target audience and the marketing that I do. And so when that very three minutes, so I needed to be incredibly focused. You guys know how I scroll and you know how important it is to me and how much I am trying to up level and change and really focus. So I practiced my pitch. I never wrote it down because I didn't want to have to read it because a lot of times if you write things down and then you go to read it, you end up reading instead of being looking at the camera and being comfortable, right? So fortunately, my Magic Mondays has taught me how to just talk to the camera, which is really good. So excuse me, guys, it's, it's rolling. The energy's rolling. I'm going to get to the readings, I promise. Excuse me, you know that happens every time and then the uh, nose itch. So anyway, what they, so, so what it did, so I had to, I had to really bend time. So I didn't write it down. I got it out in my head. I practiced it in front of my family and I probably practiced it a good 15, 16 times. And then um, I just got ready for the book pitch. And then I came in and I did a meditation. So as you guys know, I have talked to you, we've had Magic Mondays this year already about the importance of meditation, the importance of quiet time. It is the thing that you need to do if you want to develop your intuition. You must find meditation time or quiet time. We must be able to take the conscious mind and we must be able to calm it down from the busyness and the monkey mind so we can feel and hear our guides and our angels and we can feel our higher selves and our inner intuition. That's just key. It's just what, you, what we all need to do. So I went in and I came in and I did a meditation. I did my process that I do before I do my readings or any work. I lit my incense. I, you know, gridded my room and I took a big deep breath and I went into meditation. And then at the end of meditation, I set an intention. And the intention that I set was that I was calm, centered, um, uh, calm, centered, charismatic, and I can't remember the other word now, calm, center, charismatic, confident, right? So I wanted to be all of those things. And, and um, I'm going to come back to your guys' question in a minute. So hang on. So calm, centered, confident, and charismatic. Those were the four C's that I wanted to be. And I just wanted to embody it. And so I also wanted to bend time. So I wanted to practice with the bending of time. So when I was in the meditation, I actually saw myself in the middle of the book pitch I saw the three minutes, I saw the clock on the wall, and I literally took time, I grabbed it in my mind, I grabbed a little bit of when I was talking for that three minutes, and I saw myself talking, so I'm trying to explain it with my hands, but I had my eyes closed, and in my third eye, I projected myself in front of me, I saw myself, so I was looking at myself, it's called disassociated, right? It means that I was above myself looking down on myself and I was watching myself going through the book process and through the three minutes. And then in my disassociated state, I took those minutes with my hand, so in my diso disassociated state, watching myself, I took that and I actually took my hands energetically and I pulled it out like a slinky right? So I just took it and I saw myself running through it, absolutely running through it. And then I saw myself stretching the time like a slinky. So I was energetically stretching out time so I could time bend it. And then when I got done, I went 15 minutes into my future and I saw a successful completion of my pitch. You guys, these are neuro-linguistic programming techniques and they rock. They're absolutely amazing and they are what I have learned to do as a master practitioner and it works. It is absolutely incredible how much it works. So anyway, so I did my NLP on myself. I did what I needed to do. I came out of it and I was strong and I was confident and I went into that meeting just ready. Now, here's the other thing I want to tell you. If you don't feel like you are at a point in your life right now where you can see yourself in a movie, looking up from a movie, looking down, and that you don't feel like you might be able to bend and stretch time yet, okay, which you may not, right? That's kind of an advanced technique. 
and I go ahead and, and challenge you to play with it. You know, it really is active imagination and active play, okay? And if you don't feel like you can do that right now, here is the one technique I wanna teach you that we can all do to improve our focus and to improve our motivation. We have a task that we need to do. It is a Hawaiian technique. It is called Hakalau, okay? And Hakalau is pretty awesome. And I use this all the time. And we taught it to my 14-year-old daughter and she uses it at school before test and before archery and before any tournament that she has to do, she goes into Hakalau. So what happens is from a neuroscience perspective, we are all looking right here, right? We only see right here from the side of our eyes forward, and that is called foveal vision. So we are mostly walking around in foveal vision. Now, when we get in the car to drive, we take our foveal vision and we expand it and we go into peripheral vision at that point. And we do this automatically when we drive because we know that we need to have focus on the road and we also need to be looking around us and beside us in our rear view mirrors. So we are actually taught when we learn how to drive a car, we are taught to go into Hakalau. That's what it is. So Hakalau is intentionally taking yourself from your normal foveal vision and widening it out so you're in peripheral vision. And I've talked to you guys about the, the 126 bits, that our unconscious mind is picking up 2 million bits of information every second, and our conscious mind is grabbing 126 bits. That's it. And it needs to be that way because we cannot overwhelm the conscious mind with everything else going on because we need to be able to focus and live our lives. So that's the purpose of it. So when we expand foveal into peripheral and we go into Hakalau, we widen the neuroscience, the brain's capability of collecting more than 126 bits. It allows us to take in more information, not 2 million bits of information, but more of the information. So one of the things I did is as soon as the meeting started, I went into Hakalau. And the way you do it is you look at something in front of you, right? So you pick a point in the future, just above you, in, and not in the future, in front of you, and you put it a little bit higher than eye vision, so a little bit higher, and you stare at that tiny little dot. And while you're staring at that little tiny dot, you soften your gaze and you go from foveal and you open it up and you literally would put your hands right here. You guys can try it with me if you want. So put your hands right here, right? Find the dot and then just kind of soften your gaze a little bit and then just allow it and see where your hands are, right? So see that it's out here and go as far as where you can see it to where your peripheral vision. So I'm like right here and I can wiggle my fingers and I can see that that's my peripheral vision. Now, if I go too far back, I can't see it. If I come back, I can see it. That is now my field of vision and that is Hakalau. If you can go into Hakalau before work, before a big test, before an event, before some time that you have to perform and you need to do it, you can actually get into that calm, quiet, centered state and you can get into there where you are getting more information. And I promise you, from a three-dimensional level, our physical plane level, you can bend time. You can get so much more accomplished because you have literally filtered out all the garbage, right? You can turn, take your phone, turn your phone on, do not disturb, put it aside, right? So you don't have that. And then go into Hakalau and it will take all of the um, distractions and it will literally filter out the distractions it will bring in what's important and then you can just sit there and it's like, right? You can just get going. So it is the way I work and it is now one of the ways where I accomplish during my work day. You know, I don't really work an eight hour work day anymore. So, you know, I work from home, I work my business, I work in and out. So I will go in and I will go into Hakalau and I will work a good two and a half hours, three hours just getting it out and busting it out. And then once I finish that task, focus and finish, complete it, right? Then I go on and I go find something else that I need to do. I take a break, a walk, I get some food, throw laundry in, you know, go play with some art for a while. And that is how I schedule my day, okay? So 
back to uh, May TV. And I know you guys said a lot that you didn't get the email links and everything else. So I do want to go back and say, I'm so sorry you guys did not get the links. Um, I guess what May TV they didn't realize is they only had 100 people that could sign up for the plan. And so the links that I put out there, because it's the one that they gave us, after 100 people, um, they had to open it up and they had a different link and I didn't I didn't see it or I didn't get it or something happened. So in my social media, when you guys click those links, it was basically a dead end. So please forgive me for that. Everything came so fast. You guys, this book pitch came up. We had a week to turn in our slide. Then we were notified the next day. And then we had three days to prepare for the pitch. So it was super, super, super fast. Um, I don't know if it's, I have looked, it doesn't have it on replay yet. I'm hoping they're going to put it on replay. What I did find out was that at the end of it, even though you guys didn't get the link for the Zoom, you still managed to get the voting link. So hopefully you, you know, you got the vote and you voted for me, even though you get it, didn't get a chance to see my pitch. So again, sorry about that. That was a uh, snafu and not anything I really had a lot of control over. Um, what I do want to tell you that was very, very cool, and this goes back to me as a metaphor, but it's you. If you start doing these techniques that I share with you on Magic Mondays, and you really do the hakalau, you really do the meditation and the focus and all of those kind of things, you will see magic start to occur in your life. You will see perception is projection, right? Perception is interpretation. What you put out there is what you will receive back. So after my book pitch was finished, I was getting a bunch of emails. Now my phone was off, so they came in afterwards, right? Because I had it on Do Not Disturb. But I was getting a lot of emails from my fellow makers that were like, you killed it, Jen. I can't believe your confidence. I can't believe how calm you were. You were so charismatic, you know? So I got all of those words, right? The words that I put out there as an intention, they literally use the exact same words back to me. I got my intention mirrored back to me. And you guys, that is manifestation. That is the law of attraction that I talked to you about. And I have to tell you the reason why it is working for me is because I have done the release work. I have done the shadow work. I've looked at it. I've done what I need to do. And um, it's allowed me to be clearer, so much more clearer and freer of those old limiting beliefs about being an artist and creative and making money and not being good enough and blah, all that stuff. It's clear, right? Now, it doesn't mean that it's gone because my shadow lives with me at all times. I have just learned to have a better communication with my shadow, my light and my dark. We are in much better communication. And because I truly have figured out how to love myself and forgive myself, when the shadow comes up, I'm able to do the release work immediately at what needs to be done so I can get to that very clear focused state. So if you guys are doing all the things and you've done all the work and you're still not able to get to that clear focused state, just know that it's not your fault. You just have stuff in your unconscious. You got some gunk in the pipes. We all have gunk in the pipes. Shadow work is not scary. Getting rid of the gunk is not scary, right? It is necessary to up level and to be the person that you want to be. Okay, so Hakalau, yes, um, that's exactly right, Hitomi, Hakalau, H-A-K-A-L-A-U, Hakalau, okay? And then D Beth, you guys, Beth is a fellow master practitioner of mine, and I met Beth during these um, trainings that I've had, so she comes on, and she says, it does change how you see the world when you go on to Hakalau during the day. You see different things. For me, it is a more positive things of value, so, and um, more when she walks in nature in Hakalau. So I would love, so you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a challenge out there because you know I love to give you challenges because I have so much faith and belief in my Magic Mondays community. And I know you guys are creatives, healers, and feelers. So I'm going to do a challenge for you this week. I would really love for you to practice Hakalau. I really think it'd be amazing. Again, you just look into a point in the future. I mean, I keep saying in the future. Forgive me for that. That's where my future lies. So. <laughs> on my timeline. You look at the place forward facing you, out about 20 feet, 30 feet in front of you, a little bit higher than your eyes. You find a little spot to pinpoint. You focus on that. 
with focusing on that, you allow the rest of your gaze to soften, and then you go from foveal vision into peripheral vision. You know how to do this because you do this every single time that you drive. So it is super easy. You just can do it intentionally now as opposed to unconsciously, okay? Okay, 